Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Of course, right when I get ready to do this video after I got home from running errands, there's, there's an overcast and it's starting to thunder a little bit. So I will go ahead and jump into this video. Welcome to all my new subscribers. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I have some makes to share with you. Oh. First of all, let me address the uh, fabric de stash sale. It's still going on. I'll have the link on, um, link down below in the description box with the code, the password fabric de stash. Um, there was a little bit of confusion on the, even though I had in the title of the fabric, um, in the description it talked about how it was measured and how you're getting extra fabric more than what is in the title but I think it was confusing because it started out saying something about half yard I forgot exa the exact words but I removed that because people thought the price that was out there was per half yard so to eliminate the confusion because <laughs> some people were still shopping this week so go ahead um, check out the link it is for whatever the total yard that's in the description. Um, so if it says two and a half yards, three, four yards, whatever, that is, you're getting all that yardage for whatever the price is. So there you go. So sorry about any confusion there. Let's get into the first pattern. Okay, so the first pattern I want to talk about today is what I am wearing, and it is McCall 7121. This is an out of print. No, it's not out of print. You can get it only online, I believe is what I saw. So you can still get it at McCall Patterns online. And this, as you can tell, I had this marked as a TNT. I've made three of these, um, but I haven't made one since 2015. And so um, if you can tell by, let me see if I can show you the line drawing. Yeah. See these line drawings? I remember I had some notes marked down. All these are separate pieces. This is separate. The back and the front panels are separate. The bodice pieces are separate. And I had in my notes, uh, no. <laughs> and I also raised the neckline, but I didn't mark the pattern. So I didn't make a new pattern piece. This is before I knew about making adjustments. I was just guessing um, when I was making these. I had no idea how to make neck bands, arm bands, nothing. So I did follow the instructions that said to fold over, do a narrow hem and stitch, which I do not like, especially on knits now that I'm a little bit more um, comfortable with sewing and sewing with knits and whatnot. So what I did was let me just show you the pattern pieces and I did confirm my whole neckband armband situation with um, shout out to Vivian Karina and Elizabeth from Elizabeth made this on what um, I needed to do for my neckband so I created pieces for this is for the um, arm this armband here I made and this is for the neckband and so I had measured I used my um, wheel and actually I can go get it and go got it I used my curve runner to determine the um, measurement around the neckline and the arm side and so what I did was let me just show you this time I went ahead and, <laughs> and added the the piece on here but I did lengthen it by half an inch at the waist and I raised the neckline and this is the um, okay this is the front pattern piece and so this is the um, piece that I added and so this laying flat I started at zero and just curved around to see how many inches that was and um, for the arm and for I did the same thing for around the neck so one of the things that for um, around the neck that I noticed I didn't point this off so see how this has a little bit of a curve there? Hopefully you can tell. It shouldn't have that. It should just be more straight. And so you can tell a little bit. I mean, it looks rounded, but I can tell it, it's, it's like a, I don't know, a little bit of a rounded V, which I didn't mean to do. And that's because the way the pattern that I had adjusted that pattern piece. So I will straighten that out. It's just going to be just a smidget, just to make sure that this, is completely round and not kind of go, going down a little bit and so it all fit well and I 
um, what I did was measure and then multiply that measurement by 80% because this is a jersey knit. Now, if you're using an ITY, which is way more stretchy, you want to use, you know, you want to make it tighter. So, um, because you know that ITY is real flimsy, but the 80% definitely worked. And I cut them, this here is two inches wide. And my neck piece ended up being uh, 11 and a half inches because it is cut on the fold. And my arm band ended up being two inches and it was 17 inches wide. Long, I should say. And so that's what I did. And this here pattern was a TNT for me. And the reason is, is because one, I did not cut these on the fold. Those pieces so unnecessary, unless you're planning on doing, um, if you got some stripes and you're trying to match doing, doing the chevron look, there is no need to, to cut it on the fold. And actually, even if you did have the stripes, I would still cut it on the fold. Why go through all that work trying to match these stripes um, when you can just cut your bodice on the fold, your front, the skirt front on the fold, and the back skirt. Yeah, so whether you're doing stripes or not, my advice is just cut it on the fold. And so that is exactly what I did. Um, the last few times I made it and this time, and the reason I have it marked as a TNT, because let me tell you, once I cut it out, it took maybe an hour to do this from beginning to end. And um, I'll sh pop up some pictures, but you can just see it does have the elastic, but I made sure that it wasn't super tight or gathered in. So I like the way um, that sits. I like how long it is. And yeah, and my back bodice piece, I can show you. Same thing with the front. I lengthened the bodice by half an inch. And the back part came out fine. Um, it was just this here. It got kind of that soft V. <laughs> that is not intentional. I mean, it looks fine and everything, but it's not intentional. So I am going to look for some. This is like the perfect summer outfit for me. I can wear this to work. Um, casually today I ran some errands. As a matter of fact, I was at um, Joanne Fabrics and they had all of their printed knit, rayon knit, cotton knit on sale for $7.99 a yard. I was not ready because <laughs> I went in there for one thing, which is for this next item I'm going to share with you. And so I did not buy anything, but the sale is going on through June 19th. So I did make a note. There's, I want at least three or four more of these so easy to whip up so i want to take my time to go back through and see I, I just like the way it sits it sits so nicely and i'll pop up pictures too but um these are just really easy so easy and i like and you'll see how long it ended up being on me and so yeah so let me get into my next um make here and I'll be right okay, back. so the next um, piece I will be sharing with you is the Stitch Sisters Hobo Button Bag. And so um, I actually was um, gifted the um, Sew Along, the class for this back in, I want to say February. And so, um, and I was to do a review and all of that different stuff. Well, that got delayed. Different stuff came up, so delayed. But finally here, so I want to share with you um, all my notes and everything for the bag. Let me show you the bag and then I will get into the review. And so I stuffed my bag actually <laughs> with some um, plastic bags just to, to fill it out so you can get a good look. But anyway, here it is. Isn't she cute? And this is what I was looking for at Joanne Fabrics. A pin. And this is just a pendant that is um, that is stuck through the front. You can't see it through her back. It's just stuck through the first layer. But there she is. And this fabric um, came, everything here came from Joann's. Everything came from Joann's. The lining came, some line I had in my stash for the past couple years, I got from Fabric Mart. This I got from Fabric Mart. Um, but this is a faux leather. And this is a black denim this is a black denim and this is the faux leather and so and then i did the the flap in the faux leather and i did the handle in the 
black denim. And let me show you what the inside look like. And I also, like I said, I got plastic in here to fill it out a little bit. I did not make a wallet for this. <laughs> so for now, I'm using my gratitude wallet. Um, Debbie Hunker, I did my video on this with the review. I will pop that right here if you want to check that out. Um, but my this is my lining fabric. You can see that it does have a pocket on the inside. So that is the inside. It has a facing piece here which is right here, which is attached to the lining that you can easily put in there. And so just showing you the inside with the pocket. And that's it. Very nice and simple. Let me get into the review because what it is, it is a, um, <clears throat> a online, one, of, one of their online classes that they offer on, um, on their website. And let me just get into, first let me address the change I made, the modification for the bag. So the modification I made, made because when I saw the bag, I thought it was super cute, right? But I didn't want a bag all one color that looked like that. I wanted it to be different textures, like the bottom part to be a different texture. So what I did was, I this is the, the uh, main panel piece, I cut it straight across. Can you see that? And I added a half inch seam allowance just so I can put them back together again once I had them cut out. And so my bottom piece is that faux leather and the top piece is the black denim. So yeah, that worked out so perfect. Um, so far as total pieces, it is one, two, three, four, five, six total pieces. So you have your lining, your pocket, um, the um, flap, the facing very easy and then the handle you measure out and can remeasure once you get to that part how, how long you wanted it so let me get into um, some of the things that I use so it calls for a magnetic snap I, I, I want to say I must have had these type of snaps this is not magnetic um, but um, it's just a snap that I had in my stash so I just use that instead of the magnetic uh, snap which worked out fine but it does call for make, uh, magnetic straps I say that three times um, fast um, the fusible fleece it does call for fusible fleece which this was actually my first time using fusible fleece and so that worked out perfect I got that from Joann's probably used one of my coupons for that um, and then I will say oh when I got to so if you're going to use something like a faux leather or leather for your bottom, I had to use my walking foot in order to sew. Like once I turned this inside out, you had to sew around. I had to use my walking foot. My regular foot wouldn't go around. So I had to use my walking foot, which looks like this. This is a walking foot. Um, I know people have, I think they're called Teflon feet. Maybe that's the same thing. I don't know. But um so yeah, I did use that in order for the uh, faux leather to move underneath my presser foot. So I did use that. Um, I will say that the um, is very this bag is very 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 beginner friendly. I always say in any of my bag reviews that you should, um, if you're starting out making a bag, do a sew along. Do one that has a sew along the pattern, has step by step where you can just follow along. Now, granted, for me, I've already made two bags prior to this, so um, I didn't necessarily need all of the intricate details in the steps. Um, <clears throat> but I still just watched all of it just to see if there was any comments I wanted to leave or um, if I had any questions um, that I think a beginner might have in making a bag but I think um, Rachel and Nikki did a fantastic fantastic bravo you guys did a fantastic job I mean when you are um, talking about grading the seams um, down because it makes it easier to top stitch Stuff like that um, is very useful when you're making a bag because you had to top, you top stitch this top piece here. And if you don't grade the seams down, you will probably break a needle or have a hard time with your machine, depending on the type of machine you're working with. Um, and you don't want 
even with maybe an industrial, maybe I'm being overly cautious, but you don't want to, um, even if you do have a heavy duty machine, um, if you didn't grade the seams, be rushing through those because you don't want to break the needle and it, you know, pop and you get injured or anything like that. But um, very good um, tips like that. Also, when you're, um, I would say, Probably the most tricky part that you want to be careful with is when you're attaching the facing piece to the lining piece um, because that is on the curve. And so um, it reminded me of uh, when you're sewing bras because it's the same thing when you're sewing the upper cup to the lower cup. You don't pin all of that in place. You just pin kind of where you start in the video. They have pin at the first notch and you just kind of um, push the fabric into the curve as you sew in. That's the same thing with bras. When you're um, sewing cups pieces together, you're not pinning all the way around, for, especially for slipperier ones. Um, at least that's, I remember that those tips in when I've sewn my classic bras. Uh, Beverly Johnson said, don't pin all the way around because it's not going to be a perfect um, fit into those pattern pieces, but you just slowly just take your time with that. I will say it's, I think this is um, half day, maybe four hours um, after you cut all your pieces out. I would say it took me less than that um, because I, I understood. I kind of fast forwarded through a little bit of the pieces where I talked about how to fuse stuff together. I already knew how to do that, but they go through all of that. That's why I say it's very, very beginner friendly. Um, and so is lots of hand holding and you will want to something like that for your first bag and so um each seg <clears throat> i forgot how many segments it is off the top of my head but each one is until you get to the end the last i want to say the last one was maybe 14 minutes long but the rest of them are under 10 minutes so it really is taking you so it's a separate video segment just for the flap like five minutes so it's really helping you take your time going through each of the steps which is really nice and like I said I highly recommend you can really play with this design like this I just knew when I um, when I wanted to do it I knew that I wanted this to be contrasting fabrics I didn't want it all to be one fabric so and I have not transferred everything from my other person here yet that's why it's kind of <laughs> <laughs> not sitting up the way um, it normally would but yeah so yeah so that is that looking at my notes that is it and I thought at the end when um, uh, Rachel was talking about putting on the um, the button you can either put a button on the front or a brooch or a pendant and so I like the pendant idea and so I was thinking when I went to Joanne's, I wanted a, maybe it would be like black diamond or crystal butterfly with pink diamonds in it. And this here is close enough. And plus, if I do find one that I, that's closer to what I want, I can easily take this out. And so just so you see, you don't see it from the other side when you pin it in. It's just pinned in through that top layer. But again, that's all in the video. So that is it. That is my review on these two pieces. And it's starting to get bright in here. I don't know if my lighting changed at all. But um, yeah, so that is it, everybody. I have makes to show <laughs> for a change this week. And so next week, I will also have more makes to show. Um, I believe that should be my jumpsuit video. So stay tuned for that and how that went um, for me. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comment box below. I will leave a link to the uh, Stitch Sisters website where you can... Um, get purchase the hobo button bag and yeah give it a try it is it's really an easy pattern a very beginner bag friendly and they really do walk you through everything that's perfectly put together bravo again ladies for such a job well done all right everybody you all have a fantastic rest of your week if you haven't subscribed please subscribe also click the link down below so you can um uh, hit the bell actually so you can uh, make sure you don't miss an upload. All right, everybody, have a fantastic and blessed week, and we will see you in the next video. Bye.